Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Okay, so this video represents the fourth episode of the Web Apps in R series. And today we're going to cover about how we can develop a iris predictor which is a machine learning model in the background. And the web app allows the user to select the input values for the four input parameters and press on the submit button and make a prediction. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is go to the Data Professor GitHub. Okay, once you arrive here, you click on the code link and then find Shiny and then click on the 004 iris predictor. So what you want to do now is to download the first three files comprising of the app numeric.r, app slider.r, and the model.r because the other three files found below will be generated automatically when we run the code. Okay, so why don't we just click on each of them manually and then for each right click on the raw button and click on the save link as. Okay, and then you select the location in your computer where you wanna save the files. So you do this for all three files, the app numeric.r, app slider.r, and the model.r. Okay, so I have already done that and I will go back to the R Studio application. Okay, so before we begin, let's have a look at what does the Iris Predictor web application that we are going to develop today looks like. So you wanna hit on the run app. You need to make sure that your working directory is at the folder where it contains all of the necessary files to be run, the one that you have just downloaded. Okay, and once you have made sure already, you wanna click on the run app button. All right, so this is what the app looks like and it allows you to put in the four input parameters. And so these are the default values which you can adjust accordingly. And then when you click on the submit button, the prediction will be made. And here the prediction is made to be that the input parameter is predicted to be a iris sutosa flower. And the probability of it being a iris sutosa is 100%. Okay, and so if you change the input parameters, And so the prediction will also be changed because the input parameter will be feed into the predictive model, which is a random forest. And then the random forest will perform the classification and it has classified this input parameter as a iris virginica with 100% probability. So let's have a look under the hood. What does the code actually look like? Okay, so the first code that you wanna open up right now is the model.r. So in this tutorial, we're going to pre-build the random forest model and then we're gonna load it in, right? So as you recall in the previous videos of this channel, we have shown you how you can deploy your predictive model into a RDS file. And so what you wanna do is you develop the model in this model.r file and you save it as the RDS, right? So you're deploying that and then you're going to read that in here on line number 15. You're going to read the model.rds in and you're going to give it a name. The name is model and then we're going to use this model for making the prediction. So the advantage of this is that the model is already built and so there is no additional workload on the Shiny application. So it can just readily read in the model and perform the classification. So this will be beneficial in the case in which the predictive model will take a long time to build the model. Okay, so let's have a look at the model.r file where we will be building the model. So the first steps that we want to do now is to load in the libraries, which will include the R curl and the random forest. So the R curl library will allow us to read the data professor GitHub to download the Iris data set. And then the random forest will be used to create the prediction model. And we also need the caret package in order to do the data splitting. Okay, so iris here will mean that we will create a data object called iris because we're going to read in the CSV, which will retrieve the CSV file from the data professor GitHub. And the file is called iris.csv. 
okay and then it will use the carrot package to perform data splitting using a ratio of 80 20 so 0 0.8 here is the 80 percent split which will go into the training index and then we will subsequently use the training index to create a training set in which it will perform slicing of the original iris data frame and then the remainder 20 percent will go to the testing set so what we're going to do next is we're going to write the training set and the testing set out into the csv files right because that would help to remedy possible shuffling of the data that will go into the training set and the testing set so it will allow reproducibility in the future so in the future we can just read in the training.csv file instead of performing the data splitting again right so here we're going to read in the training.csv file and give it the same name which is the train set okay and then we're going to delete the first column which is the index number and then we're going to build a model and assign the built model into the model data object and once a model has been built we're going to save it as the rds file so that we're going to deploy the model into the RDS format. Okay, so in this random forest function code, we're specifying that we want to predict the species of the iris flower, and we're going to use all four input parameters. And the data set will be using the training set for making the model. And then we're going to assign a entry value, which is the parameter of the random forest to be 500. And we're going to assign the M try parameter to be four, right? And then we're going to assign a true value for the importance argument. Okay. And so, so what you want to do is you want to run all of this blocks of code. So you could just control A, select everything and then control enter. Okay, and then the data will be read and then a model will be built and it will be saved as the model.rds. Okay, so this concludes the model.r file and then we're going to close that and then we're going to open up the second file which is the app numeric.r. Okay, so let's have a look. The first few lines will be importing the necessary libraries which will be the shiny library, the data.table, the random forest package. And then we're going to read in the model that we have built in the previous step and we're going to assign it into a model object. Right? And then like in previous video, the Shiny web application will contain three components. So the first component being the UI and the second component being the server and the third component being the Shiny app function, which will essentially piece together the UI and the server. Okay, so let's have a look at the UI and we're going to open up the web application and have a look right at the same time. And for readability of the code, I would just add additional enters to it, a new line to it. So that when I open up the web browser concurrently, the values here won't be hidden. Okay, save it and go back to the web application. All right, so here the name of this web application is called Iris Predictor. And so it is in the header panel here. So we put in the Iris Predictor. If you want to change the name, feel free to do so right here. And then we're going to have the sidebar panel, which is on the left. And then we're going to have the main bar panel, which is on the right. So as always, the left or the sidebar panel will take in the input parameters and then clicking on the submit button, which is right here, it will send the input parameters to the server function and the server will use that input parameters to feed it in to the predictive model which is the random forest model and make a prediction and once the prediction has been made the resulting output value generated will then be feed back into the main panel right here and then the results will be displayed in the table data which is going to be occurring right below this text message so the table data will be shown right here which is the prediction being made Okay, so in the input parameters, we're going to use the HTML tag and then inside we're going to assign a size of the header to be H3, right? And then the name will be input parameters right here. So further showing the versatility of the Shiny application framework. So notice that the S and L are capital letter and this is the ID of this input parameter, sepal length, and it is case sensitive. So we have to type it in exactly as is when we're going to use it in a the next step so it's going to be like input dollar sign and then sepal dot length and then this will be the input parameter which the server function will be using as the data to be fed into the random forest model okay and so the label here will be sepal length and the label means right here the label and the value is the default value which is five and here is five so if you change the default value to 5.1 and then you save it run the app again and so you see that the 5.1 will be updated right here in place of the 5.6 
zero, okay? And so the same thing will be for the sleep width, pedal length, and pedal width, right? With the label and with the value, which is the default value right here. And then the next block of code here is the action button function, and this will be the submit button. So it will override the reactive function in which when there is no submit button, every time we modify the numbers in here, a prediction will be made. So that would put a heavy load onto the server because every time that you update the value here, a prediction will be made. So imagine that you update the values 10 times, 20 times, then 20 predictive models will be created. Whereas in a situation where you have the submit button, you can spend all the time or as many times as you need to update the values, right? Let's say 5.2 and then I change my mind now I want to have it 4.9 so do this 10 more times and so the prediction model will not be built right so it's going to wait for you until you click on the submit button and then the prediction will be made okay so this will be more economical on the server side and also for familiarity where we normally would click on some button in order to initiate the process of the prediction okay and then the following block of code main panel will be right here so in the tax label h3 status output it will be this part so notice that this block of code is exactly the same as the html block of code so i'm just showing you the versatility of the shiny web application and you could use either one okay but this is the shiny way of doing things right so let me show you by putting it right here and then i'm going to comment that out and then put in the input parameters here and then replace the value inside Okay, reload the application, right? And then it looks exactly the same, right? So you can do it both ways, right? And then the following text box shown here will tell you that the server is ready for calculation. So this will be displayed upon loading of the web application. And upon clicking on the submit button, the value will be changed to be calculation complete. Okay, so this will be on the server side. So I will show you in just a moment. Okay, so we finished with the UI component and now let's go on to the server component. And so here we're gonna load in the function. Okay, so this block of code here will be the input parameters, which will be obtained from the UI component where the user will input the input parameters and click on the submit button. And upon doing that, all of the input parameters will come in as shown in this block of code here. And this block of code will essentially generate the input CSV file, which will be read into the test object and then apply the model to make a prediction on this test object. And once a prediction has been made, this block of code data set input will contain the prediction and the prediction value will be inserted right here, right? And then it's going to be encapsulated by a output table data variable name. And then this thing, and then the input dollar sign, and then the output dollar sign table data will be sent to the main panel in the UI to be displayed. So it's right here, right? So this one will come from the table data right here. Table data, right? This highlighted in blue and it will be coming from the prediction results table, right? Which we use the render table function here and the data set input here will contain the prediction which is coming out from the output data object. Okay, so let me go specifically line by line here. So a data frame will be created and then name will be the name of the header variable name on the first row. And then the values will take in the input parameter value from the UI. So input dollar sign, sepal length, sepal width, pedal length, pedal width will come from the input text box right here. 5.1, 3.6, 1.4, 0 0.2. So these text box will be the input dollar sign, sepal length, sepal width, pedal length, pedal width. Okay, and then we're gonna create a data frame and once we have done that, we will write it out as a input.csv file. And then we're going to read it back in. And then we're going to put it into the test object. And then we're going to create a output object. And a data frame will be created. And we apply the prediction function in order to make a prediction using the random forest model on the input test data. And once the prediction has been made, we will also tell the probability in three digits. Okay. And once a prediction has been made, it will then be sent to this output data object and it will print it out and it will be representing the data set input. And this data set input will be inserted into the render table function and a table will be generated to show you the output prediction results shown right here. Right. Okay. So that's essentially it for this iris predictor in the numeric form. So let's close this and hop on to the next one. 
Okay, so now we're going to proceed with the app slider version. And before doing so, you want to clean the workspace environment. So click on the broom button. And then after you have done that, then you want to click on the app slider.r and then control A and then control enter. Right, and then the web app will be loaded. So you see that now instead of a text box where we put in the numerical value, you're going to have a slider, right? And then you click on the input parameter by sliding here. And then after you're satisfied with the input values, then you will click on the submit button. And then the prediction will be made. And as always, it looks exactly the same, but the only difference is the input parameters will have the slider bar instead of the text box. Okay, so let's have a look under the hood. So what new code did we add to this file? So we've added line 17, 18, and 19. And then we've also added two new arguments, which is the minimum and the maximum argument into each of the input. And we also changed the name from numeric input into slider input. And that's essentially it. We just changed a couple of lines of code and the web app will look like this. Instead of a numeric text box, we're going to have a slider bar. So the value of the minimum here will be taken as the minimum function and then the train set dollar sign sepal length, right? So I don't have to manually put in the minimum value or maximum value, but I will do this programmatically. So I'm going to use the minimum function and inside the minimum function as the argument, I'm going to say, okay, I want to have the train set object and I want to have the sepal length column and I want to know what is the minimum value, right? It's going to be like this. So let me close this and I'm going to read in the file. So let me show you how it looks like. And if I run the train set, it will look like this. And then I'm going to run this line and then notice that the first column will be gone, right? I don't want the index to be shown, so I just delete it out. And then when I say train set dollar sign sepal length, what I get will be this. So it's going to be the values of only the first column. And upon adding the minimum function in front, I'm going to get the minimum value. And if I use the maximum function, I'm going to get the maximum value of this column. So the minimum is 4.3 and the maximum is 7.9. So instead of putting in the values manually, 4.3, 7.9, I'm going to do it programmatically and it's going to be so much easier, right? And then I just put it in right here. And that's all for modifying the code and everything else works exactly the same and you get a new feel to the web application and it's not that difficult. Okay, so play around and let me know what kind of web application you want to be made and or the input data that you want me to use for making the web app. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.